Hey friends, today I'm going to talk about creating educational content. Regardless, if you want to make educational content on YouTube or record presentations, I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you, including the workflow I use. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the software you're going to use, which is going to be OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, Audacity to edit audio, and Caden Live to edit video. And these are all cross-platform. So let's talk about the most important thing, which is planning out your content. Plan your content out in advance, be it using a script or writing a post, and this is going to give you a clear idea what concepts you want to convey to someone else. So first, if you don't know how to get started, just write down everything you want to convey to someone and then later you can figure out the order and then you can write the post using regular markdown, Notion or Obsidian. So let's talk about sound. You don't need a fancy microphone. This is probably the most popular microphone used by every YouTuber and podcaster, which is the Shure SM7B. It's a great sounding professional microphone and the price reflects it. So when you're starting out, this may be a bit much, but there's another problem with this. Because this is a professional microphone, you need external power over XLR. So this is just the starting price because next you need to get an audio interface to connect everything together. And now this audio interface takes space on your desk or whatever, and you introduce more points of failure. And another downside to me is that this just prevents you from creating because if you have some problems you have to figure out, then you're not going to be as motivated to record or create content, right? So to get started, just look up a cheap dynamic USB microphone so you don't have to think about it. And you can get a bundle like this on the right where you can get the microphone arm. And this is really important. So the microphone isn't on your desk and absorbing vibrations. Of course, don't get the cheapest crap. Look up a review, make sure it's not sponsored or something, it's a genuine review, right? Make sure you like how it sounds. And as you can see, you can get a cheap USB microphone like that at half the price of an audio interface. Also make sure when you get your microphone that you position it properly because it's going to make a huge difference. And to be honest, you can also get away with the microphone on your headset if it sounds decent, and we're also going to later process the audio anyhow, so it's going to sound great. All right, so let's talk about recording your screen. For recording, we're going to use OBS, which is frequently used for streaming, but it's really a great screen recording software. So of course, this isn't going to be a tutorial on these sort of things, but I just want to show you the workflow. So as you can see here, I have some scenes where I have the tiled window scene. I have a scene where I record a single window and another scene where I record an entire desktop. And OBS is really simple to get started with. When you're going to open it for the first time, you're going to even have a setup and don't really obsess over the options because they don't really matter, but I'm going to show you my settings. So for example, here in the output, I have the bitrate set from the setup, so I didn't change anything. I choose the audio bitrate to be maximum at 320 kilobits per second. And then for the video encoder, maybe you can use hardware acceleration. As you can see here, I'm using software because Linux life. And then for the encoder preset, I choose very fast. And then for the recording quality, I choose high quality, medium file size. And for the recording format, I picked MP4 and that's basically it. And it works great. And you can also use MKV, which is great if OBS crashes. But instead of relying on that, go back to what I said earlier or plan out your content. If you're going to do a video that's an hour long or something, break it into parts and then later you can edit it as one single video and no one is going to notice the difference. So this is why it's really important to hide things like the status bar so people don't see the clock so it's not this jarring when you're editing the time skipping and etc. So the next thing, let's talk about video. So I have 1080p which is fine and for recording tutorials you don't need anything more than 30 FPS because there's not a lot of motion in these videos. And the only thing I want to mention is if you have some weird color output, you can play with the color format here, what works best for you, but if everything looks great, how you see it on your screen, then it's perfectly fine. One problem I have with recording is that the colors look washed out when I'm done recording, and that's easily fixed in the video editing software by boosting the saturation. So the most important thing is probably the audio, because audio is more important than video. You can record in 720p at 30 fps and no one would question it, but bad audio is something that can ruin your video. And what do I mean by bad audio? Bad audio isn't some artifacts caused by using a bad microphone. It can be anything from static noise in the background and etc. It's very important that you use headphones for editing because you're not going to notice those problems when you use your speakers that are going to hide them. So we're going to use Audacity to apply a couple of effects. We're going to apply a noise reduction, a filter curve EQ or an equalizer, which changes the volume of some frequencies. Then we're going to apply normalize, which makes everything sound the same volume. And last, we're going to use a compressor, which makes the volume even. 
So when you're speaking quiet and when you're speaking loud, it's going to sound the same. So let's look at that process in Audacity. Audacity is awesome because you can just drag your clip and edit the audio directly. So let's look at how that looks like. So here I have a clip and I have some macro set up so we can go and use the macro. So I'm going to first select what I want to remove the noise from. Then I'm going to use the noise reduction effect. I'm going to get the profile and I'm going to run the macro. So let's hear the difference. Hey friends, let's talk about visualizing ideas with code. Hey friends, let's talk about visualizing ideas with code. And as you can hear, the difference is day and night, and you probably picked up how much noise there is in the first clip. So let's talk about editing. I'm inside Caden Live where I imported the clips and the audio. I'm going to ungroup the clips to remove the old audio and replace it with the new audio. And then I'm going to remove the space so they're perfectly aligned. I'm going to group them again. And then I'm going to cut this part of the video, of course I'm clicking around, but you should learn the shortcuts of your video editor so you're way faster. And I'm going to extract the clip, which is awesome to bridge the gap between clips. And now I'm going to add a simple transition. And how beautiful is that? And lastly, the awesome thing that you can do is add a guide so you can export your markers for YouTube. So I'm just going to press G and add a guide and that's it. So let me show you how an edited video looks like. In my last video where I released Animotion, some people were curious, hey, was this entire video made with Animotion? And yes, yes, it was. You can see I only made some cuts here, put some guides and that's basically it. And I also do some things where I mute out the sounds like sharp inhales and etc. Basically sounds that bother me, but yeah, nothing special. And basically that's it. So as you can see, the original video is 20 minutes, but this edited video is around five minutes. So when you record it, you don't have to start again when you make a mistake, just pause, go back to at whatever point you were, and then you can just edit it later. So I want to share a tip with using FFmpeg because I prefer to work with one video. So if you have multiple videos, you can easily stitch them together without re-encoding them. So here I have a simple bash script which I asked ChatGPT for, so you can create a list of videos using this script and then we want to stitch them together without re-encoding them. So here is how we can do that. So we can stitch together multiple videos into one large video which is easier to edit in my opinion. And that's basically it. And of course, don't overthink it. Use whatever works for you, you don't have to do everything I said here. Alright, so if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can support me by becoming a Patreon and don't forget to join the Discord. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one.